playing online and on smart devices. Now on London Scotty Radio, it's podcast time. I'm George Matlock. Welcome to an episode of Collard here on London Scotty Radio. These are the occasional interviews that we do when somebody writes into us with an interesting story to tell. And indeed, our guest today did exactly that last week, uh, wrote in to me, Louise Fuller, who's now on the line. Welcome to London Scotty Radio. Thank you, George. It's lovely to have you on board. Now, you wrote to me about a week ago, I know, and you told me about the amazing story of your Scottish terrier, um, who is called Mary or was Mary. And um, you you wrote in a lot of detail about about your love of canines, obviously told me told us about your Labradors as well. And you told me the story about Mary and how she was a rescue um, through Stex, uh, with whom we work very closely here at London Scotty Club. Uh, and the story really touched me. And that's why I invited you to join us in this interview. And I think it's it's very nice that you were, and very brave, that you have agreed to come forward and to speak about your Scotty. Um, so maybe pr- perhaps we just go back to at the beginning, which is where... Um, you you wrote in because you wanted to join the London Scotty Club, didn't you? I did, George. So um, we lost Mary four weeks ago today, quite suddenly. And um, obviously it was quite a shock. And uh, a lady that we hire a cottage from in North Yorkshire had been to a terrier meetup. And she said to me she'd met a couple that had adopted two Scotties from Stex. And Mm -hmm. we'd actually um, adopted Mary from a rescue called Pro Dogs Direct. And um, so she said, oh, she gave me the details anyway. So I I became um, a member of Stex, but I explain to them that we're actually going away for two weeks at the beginning of um september so wouldn't be looking to get another scotty until we were back home so anyway missing mary and not seeing any scotties around where i live um i was woke up in the night obviously sobbing because I'm still grieving for Mary Mm. and I had a look on Stex and then I I came across the London Scotty Club and um and I was reading some of the stories on there and listening to some of the podcasts and I thought oh I wish I'd found you when Mary was alive but um it just prompted me to email you and ask if I could be a a member although I'm Scottyless at the moment and um although i don't live in london now i was previously living in london and you kindly let me join as an honorary member thank you that's a great wrap of what we discussed and thank you very much for for that louise um i have to say te- as a technicality you are kind of still london bound because i believe you you live in the home counties don't you i do that's right yes yeah, yeah. so um, we- we we our our general rule has always been the M25, okay, um, and that yeah. has been kind of our geography. But as the club has expanded, and we've been going since twenty sixteen, um, uh, so people have you know have have tried to bend the rules and say, well, I'm only just a few miles outside of the M25. Um, so we we mm-hmm. actually opened our doors. We we took the view, and this was kind of a. a, a club uh, club committee decision that you know you can be a supporter of a particular football club but not actually live in in, in the town from where the the team is and i think that's a very good that's comparison right. you know um and so mm. we we have always taken the view that we 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 won't decline people joining even though they're outside of london and now we have actually a membership which is nationwide in fact, so much so that we've actually had to restrict the admission cycle. So we only admit members once every quarter, so every three months. Um, and the mm-hmm. next one is uh, coming up in, in early September, in fact, uh, the next the, the next uh, admission list. And um, we've 
I, there was a Wheaton Scotty that I was speaking to only today, uh, the, the the owner uh, today, and and uh, I said, oh yes, you remember you you need to sign up before um, you know the next uh, walkabout, which is taking place at the end of September. So usually about a week or so before. Uh, the next walkabout, that's when we do the the whole admission cycle. Um, we do that really because we're volunteers mm-hmm. and it's so much easier to manage when you, you're doing these kind of on bulk as opposed to, uh, you know, e- every other day or whatever. So it's just, it's just more, um, for us, it's much easier to manage. But that's an, an internal matter. But um, it's great to have you on board. And Louise, yes, indeed, you're very welcome to join London Scotty Club, even if you're in John O'Groats or, or in Land's End. So... Welcome to the club. Thank you. And, Thank you. And we say honorary only because on a technicality, you you are, as you said yourself, Scotty-less at the moment. But tell us about Mary, because her story is a very brave one as well, isn't it? I mean, uh, how you came to 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 rehome her and, and look after her. But I mean, her her first and her I mean, how old was she when she when you lost her? Well, um, when we adopted Mary, there was a sort of what the, the, nobody really knew how old she was. So mm-hmm. we thought she was four and we'd adopted her in 2019, October 2019. And um, so we thought she was nine. But actually, um, when she passed away, the vet said she was over 10. So mm. right, we just had a, you know, short of five years, really. Yeah, yeah. And um, now her early years, her formative years, were were not happy ones, were they? Where where, where had she been living before uh, Stex, um, you know, partnered you uh, with with it, Mary? She'd um, been rescued from um, a traveller's site, and she'd been used for breeding. The reason they handed her over was because she had a chicken bones stuck in her throat and she was quite emaciated Mm. and she also had an untreated fracture on her front left leg as well so um you know she'd had a hard life and they handed her over to the rescue and um i met Donna, who was who fostered Mary when I was out walking my other dogs, and um, I took a bit of a shine to Mary. And when I got back to my car and and put the dogs in the car, Mary was beside me. So I said to Donna, "Oh, I quite like Mary. And um, what do I need to do?" And she sort of signposted me to the um, application form online and said complete that and then I'll come and do a home check Mm -hmm. and then a week later we picked up Mary um and she was on that was her gotcha day and she was ours and that and and did Stex uh do any uh any anything to help uh make Mary comfortable well, because obviously she had two serious things. She had a, a problem with her, yeah. her, her ligament and and this, and this chicken bone. Yeah, so she she was it was Pro Dogs Direct that had um, rescued her, mm-hmm. and obviously they it, she went straight to the vets and um, the chicken bone was res- removed by forceps, mm-hmm. and then um, the fracture had healed. So she just kind of had a bit of a bend on a a front leg um and she was um she needed a really good trim as well her coat was really matted so she had all that um trimmed back Mm. and and then they fed her up until she was ready for adoption there is of course a a very important uh, message in this and that is about chicken bones i don't know about you but Mm -hmm. i never allow my dogs and they're Scotties to go anywhere near a chicken bone because they're like no. ne- they're like needles, some of them, and you know uh, they're incredibly dangerous um, and are clearly uh, not something you want a dog to be near to. Um, so there's definitely a lesson there, I think, for all of us uh, who are uh, dog owners to to avoid uh, mm. such such risks in the first place. Uh, and it's a shame mm. that she had the other problem, with, obviously, but it, it sounds like it kind of healed itself and. 
and it didn't cause her discomfort yeah, so, thereafter. No, so it was just an un, it was an untreated fracture, and it, like you say, it healed itself, and she just kind of got on with it, really. Yeah. But I suspect that she was scavenging when she was, um, you know, looking mm. for food. Mm-hmm. Um, probably not well looked after, like yeah, we look after our Scotties. So yeah. But at least they had the 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 you know the the common sense to to deliver the dog to somebody who could look after, right? Because you said that they mm. they did uh, uh, pass her over, um, and I, mm. and we all know that that probably made the difference, made a huge difference. Yeah, um, you know, and time was everything in that case. I'm sure it, it, things would have only just got worse if 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 they had yeah. prevaricated over this decision. And um, mm. n- now you are without a Scotty, but the question that everybody's going to want to ask is, having given a loving home to a Scotty for about nearly five years, will you have another Scotty? It sounds like you will from what you De- said earlier. Definitely. Yeah? I, uh, initially, I just said, I'll never get another Mary. Um, but, I, you know, I would be able to give another dog a, a good home. Um and I, I don't usually go for a smaller dog, George. So, mm, mm. you know, the Scotty was my first experience of a, a small dog and I wouldn't have any other dog now. So <laughs> I've got my Labradors, but, um, yeah, definitely go for a Scotty next time. And I did speak to um, a lady called Kath. It wasn't Kath Marchbank. Um at Stex at the weekend, and I and I said because I only do rescue dogs, I wouldn't mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. go to a breeder, and that's what I liked about um, the London Scotty Club, the ethics around it. That you know you wouldn't um, promote any like puppies being sold for profit. Mm-hmm. I just yeah, mm-hmm. I I would only do rescue. So um, I I. I did listen to your podcast with um, Cash Marchbank when she'd adopted an older Scotty that, and then found out it had bladder cancer, mm. but and she'd not had it for long. But what it gave her as well, and I and I thought, yeah, I, I think I would go for an older dog because they're harder to rehome, aren't they? They are, and obviously the older they are, the more complicated it becomes uh, because more and mm. more things can, you know, accumulate. And sometimes it's behavioural. It's not just physical, right? It's also the the way that a dog was, was mistreated sometimes or sometimes they're not mistreated. Yeah. You know, not all dogs that need to be rehomed are actually uh, have the plight that Mary had. I mean, a lot of Scotties are just with elderly people who no longer can look after uh, the Scotties, mm. and, and it, it's just the right decision to to try to rehome the dogs. But of course, Stex is, mm. as they say themselves, and on their website, they're trying to bring owners and dogs together. In actual fact, their role is not just to be some kind of a clearing house for uh, dogs to be rehomed. Their role is to try and keep families together, and that's why they try to yeah. provide medical support. Uh, you know, pay the medical bills and so on, so the owners don't have to let go of their dogs. And I think that's the commendable thing that they're doing. Yeah, definitely, uh, yeah. So it's a, it's a fantastic charity, um, Stex. And, um, and you, you mentioned the Labradors. Now, I know you, you, you have had Labradors, and, uh, and that I'm sure after what you just said about you wouldn't have any other dog than a Scotty, they must be looking over their shoulders now, looking a bit nervous. <laughs> well, I've, we, lost, we actually lost, we had a, a Labrador collie cross that we lost in February. He mm. was 15, mm. but we'd had him since a puppy because my children were younger then. Um, but, the vet said to me, get a puppy, and he'd come from many tears. Mm. Um, and he'd he'd been rescued from a dog pound in Ireland. And um, then we had another one similar, but we lost her um, in 2018. So then we went back to many tears and got Betty a lab as company for Bear. And um, so she's still with us. And then we after we lost Bear, we adopted a fox red Labrador as company for her. Mm. Um, and we've had him since the beginning of April. It's uh, it's lovely what you said as well about um, you, you, you wouldn't normally have chosen a small dog, but I suppose no. any Scotty owner will tell you that 
a Scotty is a huge dog in a small dog in body, a small body. You know, yeah, definitely. We talk about them having their own kind of Scottitude. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, well, it, I'm I'm so thrilled to hear that um, th- that Mary has made such a huge impression on you in terms of the of the breed, um, and mm-hmm. you're uh, you're you're like all the other Scotty owners that I've ever met. Once they once they've you know, partnered with a Scotty, that's it. That's the dog yeah. that they want to have. So we, we really yeah. wish you all the very best for the future and for bringing whoever this will be, this new Scotty, to our walkabouts at the London Scotty Club in the future. And um, please Thank stay you. in touch. Please drop us a line and let us know how you're getting on with the search. Um, and, and yeah, we, we, we very much look forward to, to, to meeting you. So um, whether or not you're in or outside of the M25 motorway uh, around orbital motorway around London, you are very much now welcome uh, to join the club. Thank you very much, George. OK, so with that, um, we'll wish you a, a very pleasant uh, day ahead. And, well, we'll be in touch, no doubt, to hear your exciting news when you have more to tell. I will. I'll keep, I'll keep you in the loop. But thank, thank you. you very much, George, for thank your you. time. Bye. Thanks for listening to London Scotty Radio. This and all our podcasts are available online at londonscotty.club. If you liked it, be sure to subscribe to us from your favourite podcast player app. Also visit us on YouTube for fun videos. And if you have a Scottish Terrier in London or nearby, be sure to join us.